Hey, what's up guys? So I was thinking earlier that uh, the foods that I've been eating, I've been eating a lot of soups and it's good because it fills you up. It's essentially water and chicken bouillon. And when I was halfway done eating the food, I actually didn't want to eat anymore. So um, you can eat uh, soups, like pickles. You can eat vegetables that have low calories. They're kind of like filler foods. So just say, for example, if you're eating uh, watercress, uh, arugula, lettuce, salads, be careful of the dressings and the, the carbs that you put in. Alfalfa sprouts, Napa cabbage, all this stuff is cheap too, by the way. Uh, cucumber, celeries. If, if you cook celery with chicken and oyster sauce, it's not good. Put cayenne pepper in it, it's easy. Radishes, bok choy. Oh, I remember going to like a taqueria and then they would have uh, like carrots and they would have radishes and I would just eat them like crazy before I eat the real food because I know I don't eat enough vegetables and they're filled with food so it is what it is it, it's better than eating chips and salsa so you, you want to eat a lot of chips you're going to get fat so cabbage, mushrooms, eggplant, swiss chard, asparagus, spinach, uh, summer squash tomatoes, avocados, green beans, pumpkin, broccoli. But the, the downside to eating a lot of vegetables is it, it causes gas. Because I was researching avocados, if you eat too many, you'll get gassy. If you eat too much broccoli, because it ferments in your stomach, and that's how it gets digested. So just expect to have a lot of it if, if you're eating these kinds of foods. I was also talking to one of my friends and he's going to be competing in a competition soon and I said, oh, you know, make sure you eat your vegetables and he said, I, I don't like vegetables and, and I was thinking like, you know, you, you eat for performance, you're not necessarily eating for taste and it, it just sounded kind of childish in my opinion that I, I, I personally think that eating vegetables is a good thing, but maybe, maybe if you want to be like on a carnivore diet, it's more expensive too, by the way, so. That's why I recommend the, the vegetables and the protein. You could eat sardines or whatever. Uh, you, you could bulk up, you could look good on a budget. You, you don't have to spend like hundreds of dollars on filet mignon or whatever, unless you got it like that. So I'm, I'm about 160 right now. I look pretty good. And I was 160 when I woke up this morning. I only ate breakfast, a big breakfast. And I can show you a picture of it after the video. So I was also thinking that um, don't expect the best results if you're, if you're half-assing it, essentially. So if you want 100% results, then you should be doing 100% of the work. Maximum effort, essentially. So I'm mid-March right now, and I'm pretty much on track for dipping into 150. I think I have less than two more weeks left. So we'll, we'll see, maybe I'll end up at 158, maybe 156. Who, who knows how, how I'll look, but I, I, like, I don't like love handles. And I, I think me at this weight, I, I look real good. Uh, I, I woke up the past two mornings and I was like, damn, I, I look pretty good. So I was pretty happy. I put a smile on my face. Um, um, I remember in the past, I never tracked my macros and I was working out a lot. I was doing cardio for an hour. I was lifting for another hour, but I wasn't tracking and you can't, you can't outwork a bad diet. So make sure that this is the cheapest way to do it is make sure you walk, you know, make sure you do your push-ups, your sit-ups, your air squats, like light workouts, whatever, right? So you're not wasting your money on food. You're not, um, you know, you overusing your body parts, essentially, because there, there are longevity to it. Um, another thing that I was thinking about was uh, I have a supercharger on my car, and since you're pushing air into the car, it's creating more power, it wears it out faster, and your body is exactly the same. So um, that that's how you, you should think when you're training, when you're trying to build your habits, and also... I have one other friend, he's, he's getting into powerlifting. He's a young guy, and he, he recently saw some uh, PRs, and I was like, yeah, you know what, I probably won't be able to hit those PRs right now. So I, I, I could do it in the future, or 
I was kind of downplaying it. I'm pretty sure I could hit them. But anyways, I, I, I should more train and build habits the way I, I will be training for the next 20 or 40 years. So I'm, I'm not necessarily, there are certain movements where, for example, deadlift, I used to be able to do like 400, 5 pounds, right? But it's like, is it the risk to reward? It's not there. And I could do it, but I'm, I personally don't see the point of me doing it right now. And if, if I'm just using 55 pound dumbbells, it's a good amount of weight. So I'm going to make sure if you guys are doing it, use the bell, increment slowly, and just be safe about it. Because you don't want to be on the shelf for a year. I was trying to set a PR 2016-2017, and I slid my disc. I was out for a year. And I lost so many gains and I, I had trouble walking, trouble sleeping, so I'm just, just be aware of it. it. It's good to hit these PRs, but make sure you do it safe. You, you just don't want to get hurt if you can help it.